it's me, Pete. It's time for another deck review. And this week, it's Fast Riders versus Severin's Champions. And I am playing Severin this time around. It's been a while since I've played the Stormcast. I'm not sure when the last time was I played it on this channel, but Robin is taking the Fast Riders. They are his new boys. And so I'm going for the good old fashioned Golden Boys. This is a Patreon request battle report. If you come in and sponsor us at the top level, you too can pick your own battle report. You'll be able to pick warbands, the decks, the cards, the boards, the tactics, anything you like, even what color shirt we'll be wearing if it really, really matters to you. So these are my cards. Now we haven't got any limits here. There is no faction requirement. We've been allowed to pick whatever we like. So it's been a chance to go back to some good old fashioned tried and trusted combos. So let's get cracking with the objectives first. Now I have picked a couple of Stormcast specific objectives in here, even though it's not necessarily meant to be a faction specific deck, but I think these cards are useful for what I want to do. The first one of which is Consecrated Area. Score if there are no enemy fighters adjacent to my fighters. But I'm hoping, even though I'm going to be trying to get up in Robin's Grill with this deck, that there won't be too many people standing near me by the time I finish with smashing everybody's heads in with my hammer. The next one is Lightning Strikes. It's a score immediately, which I always like, and I just have to kill someone with a charge and I get a glory. On top of the other glory, that's two glory, two upgrades to stick on somebody to then use next. Could be very handy. And then I've got Seize Ground, which is scoring any end phase if I hold an objective in enemy territory. Whilst I'm not going for objectives necessarily, I am quite interested in getting easy score glory wherever I can. This just means I have to stand on one of his objectives and he's left them near the middle to the front of the board. I might just risk it and go for it. I've then gone for Advancing Strike, which is get another immediate glory if I kill someone in their territory. Well, that's my aim, so that should be a nice one, an easy one to get. I've then gone for Alone in the Darkness because there's only two groups of three people on this board, so hopefully that should be fairly easy to score. I've then gone for Annihilation again. Now, I went with this last week and I've decided to go with it again because, I, frankly, I decided, you know what? If anybody's capable of wiping out Warband, it should be Severin and his guys and gals. So we'll see how that goes. The next one is Changing Tactics. I've only got three guys and four activations, so if one of those activations could be go on guard, that'll help protect me a little bit more. And then I can make a charge and I get another score immediately glory, which will help beef someone up. I've then gone for Chosen Champion. With only three models on the board, this should be fairly easy to score, provided I can get some glory. I'm not sure where the upgrades will actually fall yet. It just depends on who's in the best position. I've then gone for Defensive Strike. Kill somebody, it's a score immediately again in my territory. And he's going to be coming after me and I'm going to be coming after him. And whilst we dance around the Mirrored City, I might as well get an extra immediate score glory for smashing someone's skull in on my side of the board. I think of Escalation, nearly always in my deck, it's two glory, which is quite meaty. I've just got to play three upgrades. Then Master of War, which is play an upgrade, play a ploy, and score an objective. Hopefully it should be fairly easy to do. And Swift Advance, which is finish an end phase in the enemy territory, which is where I'm heading. So hopefully that should be pretty easy for me to accomplish. So those are my objectives. And once I've garnered some glorious glory, I'm going to buy me some upgrades. And one of the upgrades I'm going to pick well, these are those. First one is Blessed by Sigma. It's a Stormcast specific one and it's plus one wound. Always handy, my guys are fairly tough, but another wound won't go astray. I think I'm for Awakened Weapon, because people like Oberyn only roll two dice. I could do with getting as much chance as possible of hitting with those. I've then also gone for Blessed Armor. Every time I roll a crit, when they're targeted by an attack action, I can remove one wound token. Now, once they're inspired, they'll be rolling two dice, so if I can roll some crits and get some wounds back, that would be pretty handy. I've then gone for great speed and great strength, plus one move and plus one strength, because my speed is lacking somewhat. My strength isn't, but I always know I can do with more there wherever I can. I've then gone for helpful whispers. Rolls of single assist are successes when they make an attack action and no adjacent friendly fighters. Well, my guys are probably going it alone, so I might as well get as much extra help as I can out of that one. And then incredible strength. Another plus one damage there. If I could get that on someone like and Garrett, plus two damage on her attack whilst rolling three hammers would make her pretty terrifying. I think I'm for Soul Trap and Tethered Spirit because I'd like to keep my guys alive as much as possible and any chances to resurrect them would be great. Soul Trap and Tethered Spirit both allow me to do that and if I can get it on both of my guys, Robin's going to have a real hard time trying to decide who he wants to take out. I think of a total offence. Now, some of my ploys will enable me to do extra moves, which I'll run onto in a minute. My hope is I can get total offence on someone like Oberyn, then use one of my ploys to move into position, and then use the total offence to attack with four dice. That would be a pretty hard thing to stop. 
and then trusted defender. Reroll one defense dice for a fighter when they're a target of an attack. Anything that makes me more survivable is also greatly appreciated. If I can put that in with blessed armor as well, then that gives me another chance to roll a crit and another chance to get a wound back. So those are my upgrades purchased with the glorious glory from my objectives, but how am I gonna get those objectives? Well, these are the cards that I'm hopefully gonna use to help me score them. The first card is Heroic Guard. Choose a friendly fighter and put them on guard. Now that'll help me with change of tactics. If I have both of those in my hand at the start, that will be great. I can put someone on guard and charge immediately and get a glory. That'll be a really handy combo. I then go for Tireless Assault, which is basically re-roll your attack if you miss. Never a bad card to have that. I think I'm for distraction. Robin's going to be fast and he's going to be running around the board a lot more than me, I feel. So this will give me a chance to hopefully push someone nearby and maybe I can get a free attack off without having to charge. I think I'm for Jewel of Wits. This one will be handy. I've got a 22 card deck, so anything that helps me soak through my cards and pick up more, the better. Great Concussion, pretty much always going to be in my deck because of all the reasons I've given before, always handy to have. Healing Potion, my guys die and they don't come back, so I'd like to use this to hopefully keep some of them alive. I'm combining this with Tethered Spirit, Soul Trap, Trusted Defender and Blessed Armor. I'm hoping I really make my guys survivable enough to just not die and wear down the opposition. I think I'm for my turn. If Robin attacks me and he does hit me and pushes me back, I've hopefully got enough health that I can take that hit and then I can move forward again and smash him back in the face. A free attack, very handy to have. Then I've gone for ready for action. Yep, nearly always going to be my deck like Great Concussion. This will help me do a free move or free attack. Like I said before, with total offense, hopefully I can use something like ready for action to move me in position and then make that attack without having to waste a charge. It is worth pointing out here that you can't use total offense if you charge. So I want to be able to get my movements to get me where I need to be when I want to use that card. I think for Spectral Wings, plus two move, my guys aren't the fastest, so I would like something to give me a bit of speed when I need to, just in case Robin tries to run away and I can zoom after him. I did consider taking Hidden Paths, but I don't like the restriction of having to be on an air checks and leaving it on an air checks at the end. This gives me plus two move, which will put me up to movement five, which pretty much gives me a fairly good range on the board. And then my favourite final two, Trap and Twist the Knife. I think you've got to have both these cards if you're playing an offensive deck pretty much every time. Plus one damage on Twist the Knife on a successful attack is glorious. And Trap, which is another plus one damage if you push someone back, is also a nice card to have. If you get both of those cards out, then frankly, you can one-shot somebody. You can one-shot Gerzak, I think, with those two cards. So that is it. That is my deck. I'm hoping it should be a fairly simple one. Move forward, smash face. I'm really hoping I can get Annihilation out with this. I'd really love to be able to get that one. I've got four instant scorecards in my hand to hopefully get me some early glory and with combinations like heroic guard and change of tactics to hopefully give me some really easy instant scores, I can then get some things like soul trap or tethered spirit or trusted defender and blessed armor on some of my guys to really improve their defensive capabilities so then I can get the cards like trap and twist the knife and use cards like ready for action to get me into a position so I can then start smashing him to pieces. Things like Jewel of Wits will hopefully help me get a few extra cards out. The more cards I can have in my hand, the more chance I've got of pulling things off. And if nothing else works at the end of the day, I'll just stand back and keep drawing extra cards until Robin comes near me, and then I'll jump on top of him and pummel him with a hammer. So that's the plan. I'm not sure who I favour most in the warband for this setup. I think that Angarad might actually be my best bet. She rolls three hammers, which is pretty nice and does two damage, but even with just one incredible strength or great strength on her, and then trap, she can probably one-shot anybody in the Fast Riders warband. I think this deck might struggle against someone like the Sepulchral Guard because of their numbers or the Skaven because they can be brought back. But I think even in that situation, you've got things like Spectral Wings and Ready for Action, which could hopefully move one of your guys up fast enough that you could then take out the main guys, your Scritch or your Sepulchral Warden. And then you could just sit there all day smashing the rest to pieces as they move up towards you. But anyway, we'll see how we go. Let me know if there are any cards I've picked that you certainly wouldn't ever touch with a barge pole, or let me know if there's any that I haven't picked that you would really recommend. I always like hearing what you guys have to say, and it really does help me build my deck sometimes, and hopefully it's showing. So anyway, I shall see you soon in the Mirrored City. Bye!